Hello, hello. Today we're going to be talking about what is science part four, talking about chemical reactions and enzymes. So let's go ahead and start off with some chemical reaction information. Reactions occur when we're making or breaking chemical bonds. All reactions have to have some sort of activation energy. Energy needed to either disrupt or rearrange stable electron configuration. So, we can have concentration and temperature are the main two factors that affect or influence our chemical reaction and our activation energy required. If we have higher concentrations, then we have a higher chance of the particles colliding and causing a reaction. If we have a higher temperature, all the particles are moving so much more quicker, they're moving, and then they hit each other, and they have a higher kinetic energy. Therefore, we have a higher chance, again, at particles colliding. So, chemical reactions, the process that changes one set of chemicals into another set. We have the reactants, which is our starting out. They're the things that react together. The elements are compounds that enter a chemical reaction. Well, we have our reactants, and they come together to create a product. Products are the elements or compounds produced by a chemical reaction. So, again in here, we have our hydrogen, and then we have our oxygen. And when they come together, they produce water. So again, those are reactants, and then we have our product, which is water, over on this side. Now, you may be wondering what the big numbers and what the small numbers are. The big numbers in front are going to be coefficients. You may have heard of this in math. This means that there's going to be two of each of the elements that are after it. So there's going to be two H2s and two oxygens. It has to multiply through the entire um, molecule. So, what is known as a subscript, which is this little 2 right here, past the H, means that there's going to be two atoms of hydrogen. If there's nothing beside your element, then there's only going to be one of it. So here we have two hydrogen, and then it's multiplied by two, so that's going to give us four hydrogen. Here we have two oxygen. When we combine them all together, we have four hydrogen and our two oxygen combined. Energy in reactions, energy changes. Chemical reaction um, that releases energy can occur spontaneously, such as hydrogen combining with oxygen to create water. That can happen spontaneously, because once it breaks, the energy is released. But on the other hand, chemical reactions that absorb energy, that require energy, will not occur without an energy source. You must have something fueling it or putting energy into it. So when water is changed into hydrogen and oxygen gas, yeah, so when it's actually broken apart, that does require energy. I told you about activation energy earlier. It's the amount of energy needed to start the reaction. And again, when we look at a reaction here, we say that it has to get up to a certain activation energy, and then the full reaction can take place. So, when we are building up, that's going to be the amount of activation energy, and then the full reaction takes place on this slope here. Now, a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that can speed up a chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy means it doesn't require as much activation energy, therefore it can go quicker. So, if we look at this graph here, we see that the activation energy used to be way up here. It took a whole lot to build up and build up and build up and build up and build up, and build up until it can go through. But using a catalyst, it only has to build up a little bit and then it can go. It changes it. It brings down the activation energy for the chemical reaction. So, what is metabolism? Metabolism is the sum of all the body chemical reactions, all the body chemical reactions, all of them put together. Whether it's combining, whether it's breaking down, whether it's using, whether it's taking in, etc., etc. It's the sum of all of them. Now, first we have what is known as catabolism. 
which is the chemical breaking down of particles. It is a decomposition reaction, and energy is released with an exergonic reaction. Again, this is going to be A, B, breaking apart into A and B, and energy is released. You can remember that catabolism is breaking down because when we have a catastrophe, everything's falling apart around us. Now, on the other hand, we have anabolism. Anabolism is going to be the combination of particles, which is a synthesis reaction, which is endergonic, which means it's going to require energy. And this typical reaction is A plus B combined equals AB. Now when we talk about enzymes, enzymes are going to be proteins that you just learned about with our macromolecules that change the rate of a chemical reaction. Typically enzymes speed it up. They act as catalysts to speed up the cell's reaction. So how does this actually work? Well, we have our big enzyme which is this big purple dude. And it has what is known as an activation site. We'll be talking more about what an activation site looks like later on this week. The activation site is available for a molecular substrate. And the substrate is the reactant on which the enzyme acts, whether it's putting it together or whether it's breaking it apart. So our substrate comes in here and fits nicely into sometimes what we call the lock and key method. Um, so the substrate binds to the enzyme. The enzyme converts this product, and in this case, water is going to come in and help convert it. And it breaks it apart and releases it as two pieces, fructose and glucose. The enzyme is then ready for the next substrate. Now again, the enzyme is not used up in this process. So it goes and it breaks apart and then it goes and finds another one and it breaks it apart and it finds another one and breaks it apart. The more enzyme, the faster the reaction can happen. Now yes, even if there's not an enzyme, this substrate, sucrose, would eventually break apart, but not as quickly. So, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So, Looking at the word, how many phosphates are going to be attached to adenosine? What does tri mean? What does tri mean? Oh, did you say three? Good job. So, it is a reversible reaction. What we actually have is adenosine bound to three phosphates. And what happens, and this is basically the energy currency. This is where we get energy. We either break off a phosphate and it releases energy. And that's what we use to get a lot of our energy. Um, it carries the supply of energy for many reactions. So we take ATP and we break off one of those phosphates to create adenosine diphosphate. That means two phosphates. Then a lonely phosphate that's out here going, I'm here, I'm here. And then energy, which is what we want a lot of times. Now this is reversible. But remember, we have to have energy to place back in. So if we're going from this side back to ATP, we must have an energy source to add back in this energy. So, that's all I've got for you today, and I hope you have a good week. Bye!